Hey YouTube, I'm back with another little video. I don't know if you noticed in my last video that I've got a ring light going on. Um, that baby's been collecting dust, literally sitting behind me in my little like pile over here. I forgot I even had it and I'm like, why am I not using it for videos? So here we are. You can also, as I use my hands to talk, there's going to be hand puppets over here. So who knows what what little extra entertainment's going on over here, but we're here now. Um, the Holy Spirit spoke something to me, and he wants me to encourage you with it. He said, my people are t in tunnel vision, like tunnel vision, because they don't trust me. My people are in tunnel vision. They're seeing in tunnel vision because they don't trust me. And he's like, Ezra, I want you to talk about this. And he just spoke this to me quite literally like under a minute ago. So... I haven't even processed this until now. So the Holy Spirit um, was really just putting on my heart that there's so many people that almost see this end result, whatever it is that God, they feel the Lord's promised them. They feel that they want, that they need, whatever it is, might be a few things. And it's like, they're seeing this, they're seeing this like tunnel vision, right? So when you're tunnel vision, you can't see what's going on around. You only see what's going on in this sphere, right? And so you're focusing on largely us humans. We like to focus on ourselves, right? We're like, I need this. God, why don't I have this? I'm stressed. This happened to me. I don't really get this. Ah, you know, so you're looking here. And so God and everything else is happening like around you, but you're just over here like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I just need this and this isn't happening. Meanwhile, over here, God's doing something to like, you know, something cool, you know, either to... Uh, get ready to bring something cool into your life that's going to help you advance the gospel and do what God's called you to do. Or he's just doing things, you know, over here that are really cool. So if you looked over here and took off your blinder and kind of looked here and then looked back at what you need and then look over here, you would be encouraged to see what God is doing over here. Or, you know, there's somebody over here that really needs something that you have, needs help, needs, you know, prayer needs encouragement needs whatever and so because you're like this you can't see them so you're just like I don't know what to do I have no purpose I I don't have this I need this one thing I just need this and God's like okay but but yes he's like do you not trust that I know that you need these things or I know that you need some other things that you're not even aware of and you think you just need like this one thing but I'm going to bring all these other things into your life that you actually need and he's like I I'm going to take care of that but he's like, I want you to see what I'm doing and worship me. And then I want you also to see who needs help and who needs like what I've put inside of you, who needs that over here. Okay. So when you're tunnel vision, you can't do those two things. You can't worship Jesus. Like he's asking, like he knows you need to, you need to worship Jesus. It's not for God. Worship is not for God, by the way. I don't know if you, you think it's for him. Like he needs this, like he's some narcissistic guy like worship me no that that's not why you need to us humans need to worship it's actually like we will end up worshiping other things with our lives because we're like made to worship <laughs> and so when you don't worship Jesus you're going to worship something else or you're just going to be kind of stuck you need to worship Jesus and that's a need for you so if you're tunnel vision and you're looking here and you're like I just need this I want this you're neglecting your worship of God which is ultimately hurting you and then you're also over here neglecting the opportunities to be Jesus's hands and feet in a way like, do you understand that you can communicate the heart of Jesus in a way that nobody else can? There's truth, there's fundamental truths that everybody can proclaim, right? The gospel and stuff like that. But how you represent God's heart, you have a unique fingerprint spiritually speaking you are unique and there's a little bit of god's heart that i will never ever be able to communicate to this world that you can communicate to this world that you can show to the people that god wants you to show and that's the beauty of his unique creation that's the beauty of his unique heart that's the beauty of a divine creator who is jesus that he says i've put a little bit of my heart in you that is not like everybody else's that's your own unique signature in this world that has me um, as the like basis, as the um, inspiration. So you have it, you, I, I just want you to like sit and pause and just for a moment realize your importance. That yeah, you might not be out here even doing something like I'm doing, like 
sharing every day and sh just speaking loud and it and speaking loud <laughs> not like yelling but like speaking out for god and, you know front um like your gifts might not be put you in the front but you get put more in the background Th that's totally you are so important even in the background some of my most things that you guys don't see are some of my favorite things that god has um allowed me to participate in has allowed me to help serve people and has allowed me like the things that you guys don't even know about that I do with my life I'm so like they're so important to me almost more so than doing this as much as I love this and it looks like that's like the only thing I do it's because that's the only thing that you see this is like one percent of my life <laughs> like literally but it's a big percentage because in this season of life the Holy Spirit wants me to be encouraging you guys and wants me to be out here speaking his heart um, to whoever he wants to bring to my page, right? But the behind the scenes are so important and doesn't matter who's watching, doesn't matter the amount of people you're impacting. If God has given you this um, opportunity to um, obey him with the gifts, talents, and abilities that you do have, do it as unto him. Do it as unto him with everything that you have and recognize how unique you are, how fearfully and wonderfully made that you are, but just how much value you bring to the table, because I think a lot of you have had people be like, oh, you're nothing, or you feel like you're worth nothing, or you feel like you're just awful, or like, I don't know, you just doubt yourself, right? Because of what wor words have been spoken over you, what you believe, what others, yeah, what others have said largely has really squished you, okay? But you have so much value, you have so much purpose, you have so, no, the value, the Lord wants you to know that you have so much value. What is value? It, it's worth like, you aren't just a piece of, like, trash. You're gold. Gold keeps its value. You're a piece of gold in the eyes of God that he is like, no, you are a treasure. You are a treasure to God. And if people have made you feel other than that, that's not his heart. That is not his heart for you. And so I want to encourage you that if you're tunnel vision, like, you are looking at what you need, you're not trusting Jesus in a, a little bit. And he's not shaming you. He's not like, how dare you not trust me? He's actually saying, I get that you don't trust me because you don't trust like anybody. You don't even trust yourself. So why would you trust me? He's like, I understand why you don't trust me, but you don't trust me. So he's like, I want to show you that I'm trustworthy. Go to the Bible, see that he's trustworthy. He wants to show you through life experience that he's trustworthy. Listen to testimonies of people. He's trustworthy. If you're doubting that if you can trust God, I want you to go look up the story of George Mueller. Go look it. Go look it up. He was, he's from like the 1800s. And if you think that you can't trust God, even in the areas of like finances or anything, and you, oh, God wants me to do this, but it's too big. And you don't feel like you can trust God. Go read that story. You can listen to it for free on YouTube. If you look up George Mueller's story, there's like an audio book on YouTube. You can literally just listen to it for free. R literally check that out because I'm telling you, Jesus wants to show you that he's trustworthy. He's not like the people that have failed you. He's not like you who have failed sometimes. He's so trustworthy and you can trust him. But if you're tunnel vision, you're like focusing on this and feeling like if I don't control this, if I don't control the outcome, if I don't keep my eyes on this, it won't happen. If I don't keep my eyes on this, it won't like something won't go down. And so you can see that you're putting more trust on yourself and on what you can do and just on the circumstances itself than even on God. Because truly trusting in God, you see the circumstances. So it's not like you're like, I'm not seeing the reality of my life. No, you see, okay, yeah, like, I don't know how that's going to work out. Or I need provision or I need a miracle. This isn't changing. But then you go, God, you point to that, that situation. Like, God, you see what I need. You know what I need and you will provide for me. Thank you, God. And you keep telling yourself that. And then you're able to worship God. And then you're able to help other people. And then you're able to still pray for yourself. But you leave that with God. You actually you actually have to give it to God. Just like, here, I'll grab, just, I want to use this as an analogy. This is a makeup sponge, okay? So if you have this thing, you're like, okay, I need this thing. But you're holding on to it with both hands, right? Like, this is the thing I need. I need this provision. I need this relationship. I need this baby. I need this house. I need this money. I need this degree. I need this. I need this. I need this. I need people to see me. I need this. I want to produce this album. I want to write this book. I need this. But you're like, but then do you see how these hands aren't free to go help other people and go praise the Lord? You literally are so holding on to this. They're like, I need, this is what I need. But what God is telling you to do is he's like, give it to me. 
so that you actually don't have it in your hands anymore and that you're able to serve God and you're able to help other people and you're able to trust that as you place that in God's hands, it's not in yours anymore. And then as you worship God and as you help other people, he will just do what needs to get done or tell you what you need to do to accomplish what he's asking you to do. But you have to, there's like a hair attached, that's gross. You have to give him a makeup sponge, you know, and trust that he has it in his hands so that you can worship God and help other people, okay? And so if your tunnel vision is not helping you, that's some control, okay? And the Holy Spirit wants to help you. Once again, he's not shaming you. He's not like, how come you're controlling, you awful human? He's literally like, I get that you felt out of control, so now you're trying to control, right? He gets it. He knows what you've been through. But he's like, that's not going to help you. And you're actually going to be so obsessed and fixated. And that's going to give room for the enemy to come right in and give you almost like an idolization of this. And your own flesh is going to, you're going to idolize this. And that's when deception happens. That's when you get led down weird places. That's when, you know, you can start to get bitter. You can start to get jealous. You can start to feel all these types of things. Comparison because you are just fixating so much on this that you can't even help other people and you can't even praise God and you're so fixated and that's not what Jesus wants for you that's idolatry and that actually really hurts God's heart like it's actually very serious and if you've been experiencing like oh man like I feel like there's a distance between me and God but I don't know what's going on check check what you're focusing where are are you in tunnel vision right now are you in tunnel vision because that might be that might be where you're at right now. And the Holy Spirit wants to help you um, be able to trust him enough that you give him the sponge, you know, give it to him, give him the thing that's concerning you and actually trust that he has it. Because if you trust that somebody, like if I gave this to somebody who's capable of holding a sponge, I'd be like, hey, can you hold this for me? I'm not, I'm not looking and being like, can you hold that? Are you actually holding my sponge? Like, do you know that you need to put that back in my makeup bag? Like, are you aware? Like, I if, if I know someone's reliable, I'm like, can you just hold this for a second for me? And if I know they're trustworthy and reliable, I'm going to trust that they're going to hold this for me until I need it or until they give it back to me. You know what I mean? So if you're saying, God, I'm giving this to you. And then you're like, God, are you sure you have it? But what if this doesn't happen? But God, I'll, I'll just take it. I think I should take it now. Oh, okay, you can have it. No, I think I should take it. You don't trust him. You don't trust him. You don't trust him and... You don't, you just don't understand yet. You lack the understanding. And so Jesus wants to give you that understanding and wants to walk with you. He wants to help you know that he is trustworthy because he wants you to know he's capable. Do you know that God's capable? Do you know that he's able or do you think that you're the only one who's able, able? <laughs> I was going to put capable and able together. Capable, able. Do you know that he's capable Do you know that he's able or do you just simply think that you're the only one that you can trust on because lean on and everything because everyone else has failed you? And even to that degree, you don't even fully trust yourself. And so that makes you so stressed out because you don't know who is trustworthy and you need to trust somebody. You're like, I need somebody that's stronger than me. And if you're not feeling strong, then who is? Because a lot of times if others aren't strong and for certain personalities, then you become strong and you take on everything. But what happens when you're weak? Who could you lean on? If everyone else is, you don't trust them. You don't trust yourself. Who, who, who could you lean on? You need to lean on Jesus and he will, he's strong enough to carry you through to maintain the sponge and everything the sponge resembles. He is able to do that. He's capable. Do you know that he literally knows the galaxies? He created the galaxies that we have not figured out yet. Just sit there with that. Like, if you just sit there with that for a second, are you kidding me? That's crazy to think about. There's galaxies out there that we haven't even discovered, that Jesus knows, like, every star and everything involved with that by name. By name, by the way. Like, it's it's not even hard. Do you know that, like, every hair on my... I've got actually a lot of hair. When I go to hair salons, they're like... <laughs> if they ever have to blow dry my hair, I believe that they're, like, this sucks. Like I, I've had to have like two to three people sometimes blow dry my hair at, in certain stages of my life. So God knows every hair on my head. He knows how many. I don't know how many, but he knows right now how many hairs are currently on my head. Every little hair, every baby hair, every eyelash, every hair, every follicle. He knows every follicle. Every follicle. 
the number of it down to the T. That's wild. That's crazy. So he's capable of handling your makeup sponge and everything that that resembles. He's capable of it. He really is. And when, if you don't trust God to be your provision and to be your protector, why would you expect him to bring things into your hands that's going to expand your responsibility when you already don't trust him in the areas of being your protection and your provision, which is sums up almost all of our human needs, protection and provision. If you don't trust that God's capable to provide for you and protect you, and yet you want more responsibility with more money, um, another child or a child, um, a house, a degree, a marriage, um, a new job, a new business, a new location, that's all new responsibility. That's more responsibility. And you're expecting a loving father to give you something that you can't handle that's going to literally ruin you. He ain't going to do it. He wants to build the character in you to be able to sustain what he's bringing into you and, and bringing into your life, right? So that's something that the Holy Spirit's really been putting on my heart, even thinking about many people who, let's just say, win the lottery, right? They don't even know how to handle the money a lot of times. Like they actually ruin their lives because they don't have the character to sustain the money. The enemy can give people money and success and new houses and all that jazz um, he can give you that. He can be like, hey, do you want this? And like, he can present that to you. That's not the win. <laughs> That's not the win. The win is being able to sustain, enjoy, and be responsible with the things that are given to you. That's the win. And that's only found with Jesus. That's reminding me. Where's my Bible? One second. Ow, my ankle. Did you just hear my ankle crack? Whoa. <laughs> my ankle's cracking. My floor's creaking. It's a good day. Um, but that reminds me of in Ecclesiastes. You know it's going to be deep when we start opening Ecclesiastes. That book confuses me sometimes. I'm just sitting here and I'm like, that's a deep book. That is a, just it's a lot of stuff going on in Ecclesiastes. Um, and I can honestly never find Ecclesiastes like first off the bat. It takes me a few flip throughs of the middle of my oh, of the middle of my Bible before getting it. And I know it's right after Proverbs, but I forget it every time. I just do. So where's that verse, Holy Spirit? What was that one? Yeah, right here. It's, it's right here. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 5. Um, we'll start at 18. This is what I have observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor. Under the sun, during the few days of life God has given them, for this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and uh, possessions, the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. This is um, actually chapter 6 now, so Ecclesiastes chapter 6. I've seen another evil under the sun and it weighs heavily on mankind. God gives some people wealth, possessions, and honor so that they lack nothing their hearts desire but God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them and strangers enjoy them instead. So actually God gives it. So like I, I said, like Satan can bring that in, but God gives it. God can give people anything, but if they don't have the ability to sustain it, which is a gift from God, just like um, chapter five says in verse 19, like it says, um, this is a gift of God, the ability to enjoy what God gives. But then in the other, in, in chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, it says, um, yeah, God literally gives people wealth, possessions, honor, so they lack nothing their hearts desire. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them, but strangers enjoy it instead. So the thing that you want, if you want God to give it to you so badly, he might actually give it to you. That's also a very humbling reality, but he might not give you the ability to enjoy it. He might not, because if you're idolizing something and you want it so badly, you're like, I need this more than I want God, then he might give it to you and be like, just like any loving father is kind of like, fine, here you go. You want this? Like sometimes that with the wisdom that they have, they're like, okay, you can have this. Like, you know, and just learn from it then. You're going to learn now from the experience that that wasn't a good idea. That, that wasn't a good idea. And I'll help you. If you're, if you're a good, loving father, I'll help you with the mess that you made. And, and I'll help you and I'll be there with you. But like, do you understand that 
that was a mess that you made because you chose without wisdom. You didn't seek wisdom. You seeked your own desires. And that became first instead of God's desires first. That then, you know, your heart um, becomes one with God so that you're wanting what he wants, not just what you want, right? And so that's that's pretty wild. That's humbling. Go study that yourself. I, I often ponder that, that passage of scripture. I'm like, that's so deep, God. That's so deep. Because you see it. There's so many people that have a lot. They have a lot that I would say would sum up the average human desire, but they're not happy. They can't enjoy it. They're constantly searching for more. And it's like, yeah, because the true gift is the ability to enjoy life, whatever it is. I've learned that even in this time of, I have, I'm probably, and I know this, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm probably the least like individual. I feel just not in the world in the way of, I don't know how to word this because I have a lot of privilege and I have a lot of blessing. Lord, help me word this correctly. At 25 years old, I don't have a lot to my name of like tangible wealth or degrees or titles or, um, all that stuff. I really don't. I don't, I don't own anything other than like a few electronics, you know what I mean? Like for social media and stuff. I don't have my own house. Like I don't have my own car. Like I don't own like possessions. I don't have a lot of wealth. I don't have degrees. Like there's so much that I don't have, but I'm enjoying my life and, and I'm going through tough things. Like even today, I was feeling really anxious this morning. Just um, some stuff got brought up in my mind and I was remembering things and just... I had moments where I was feeling really anxious today, but I'm enjoying my life. I have the enjoyment that's a gift from God and I'm so content because of who God is and, and that um, he's given me that gift to enjoy my life, even through hot, heavy things, hard things, and just through the mundane aspects of life and just through a normal life. Um, I don't know, like I, I've just learned that. And so it's such a gift to enjoy. It's such a gift to enjoy whatever you do have, whatever God has given you, whatever he blesses you with. It's such a gift to be able to enjoy that. But I just want to encourage you, don't get so like locked in and, and um, tunnel vision that you miss, you miss um, worshiping God and helping other people. Because that's what we're really called to do is to give our ask, the Bible says ask, bring our petitions before the Lord, but then as we bring it, we give him the sponge, toss it, and then worship God and help other people. That's what we're called to do. That's how you have an effective walk with the Lord. That's how you don't get so caught up in idolatry that it consumes you and distracts you from what God's asking you to do. So I want you just to sit and think about it. What, what don't you trust God with? And how can you go to the Bible and really sit there and ask the Lord to point you to a passage of scripture that would really show you that he's trustworthy. A story or even ask him to bring you to a testimony of someone like online or a book like George Mueller. And hear about what God has done in other people's lives. That builds your faith. That builds your faith. Like the same God that did that can handle my situations. That's really cool. Or if you've been following God for a while and the Holy Spirit, like there's a track record of obedience of, of just the Lord um, Lord's hand providing for you, then remember what he's done. Remember what he's done. And that puts you in worship. And then that allows you to help other people and do what God's asked you to do in the way of being a servant, you know, to humanity as the Holy Spirit leads you to be. So um, I just pray that this really encourages you and gives you some perspective so that you aren't consumed by the things that you want the most, that the thing you want the most, it's fine to have desires. It's fine to want things. Jesus, for so many of you, he's actually put those desires in your heart. But he just wants you to have a balance so that you're able to actually enjoy the things that God brings into your life. And that's something actually I'm remembering now that the Holy Spirit told me last year that he wanted me to be able to enjoy the things that God is bringing into my life. And if God brought things into my life a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it because there would have been things, unhealed things in my life and in my mind and in my heart that would have actually, um, I believe, stolen from me the enjoyment of the of what God wants to do in my life, right? So there's, he cares about our enjoyment. Jesus cares about our enjoyment, okay? He really does. He wants, he's created things for us to enjoy. 
he does. <laughs> like, if you look at all of creation, there's so much that he's, like, he loves giving people certain desires. Like, some people love to, you know, paint and dance and are artsy and they like to express themselves. Other people love to just think and write and study and learn. And then other people like to cook and, and really cultivate things. Other people like to work with their hands and like they find that fun and, and cool to like build and to be hands on. Like there's so much um, that Jesus has given many different things to enjoy on this earth, but you need him to truly enjoy it and to sustain it and to maintain it and to still keep him first through it all. So, um, yeah, I pray that you just really enjoy the process that God has you in to prepare you for, really is to prepare you for an eternity. And actually, I want to share something encouraging. It's not even really on this topic, but I believe it kind of is. Um, it's a good ending. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Um, so there's this verse in Revelations, right? One of my favorites. Whenever I lose sight of, not lose sight, but whenever I'm caught up in my situations or okay, God, what, you know, I can think, oh, this is what I'm waiting for. This is what I want or whatever. I, or this is what I'm called to do. I remember this is what I want to see. And, and this is it. So also my birds chirping in the background. Rue, I love you so much, baby. I love you so much. <laughs> um, so it's Revelation 21. Oh, it's so cool. I just think it's so cool, especially after, okay. So Revelation 21, then I saw a new, starting at verse one, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. I love that God. Trustworthy and true. That's what God is. That's his character. That's his nature. He's trustworthy and true. So I've written beside this. I said, this is what I'm living to see. This is what I'm being prepared for. I want to see this day. I want to, I want to see that happen. And so I had this dream. I, there was so much that led up to this dream. I don't dream a whole lot and like remember them, but when I do remember them, I do remember them. And, um, there's a whole bunch of things that was leading up to this, but bottom line is the only thing I feel led to share is like, there was this throne and that looked like there was someone evil kind of on this throne. And, um, me and some other people were like going up and trying to like stop this this uh, evil person from like succeeding or something anyway and then all of a sudden it was like that person was bound like they couldn't move this like ruler couldn't move and all of a sudden all I heard from all around the world like I just I could tell it was like so far reaching this cry and it was like Yahweh and everyone just started to yell Yahweh and this like repentant like Yahweh and all of a sudden the new Jerusalem just like fell from the sky onto like the scene and it was like a book closed the new Jerusalem fell and there's like the book closed and it makes me just feel like woo, like that's like so powerful like the book like the age was closed and then and I didn't see anything else after that but like you know it's almost like this verse like the new has begun and whenever you know when the Holy Spirit puts on my heart I'm doing a new thing that's what I picture I'm waiting for that new heaven in that new earth it's not just about a new move on this earth right now like how it is like Oh, we're doing a new move. No, I see it as God's preparing us for the new heaven, the new earth, the renewed heaven, the renewed earth that he wants to do. And we're going to be totally new then, totally without sin, no tears, no crying. And that's the new thing that I feel like I'm being prepared for. And we all are being prepared for is to be in that new heaven and new earth like um, Revelation 21 talks about. And I just, oh, it was so encouraging. So if you are losing sight of what you're actually living for, that's what you're living for. You're living for eternity and anything else that God has said, I want to give you this, or this is on my heart for you, or this is a desire you have, and I'm going to honor that. It's literally to help you, if it's from God, get you to that point and where you're in eternity with him and you're ruling and reigning with him. And that's the end goal. That's where, that's where you, your mind needs to be at. 
and everything else is just leading to that point and it's such a gift and opportunity to have but um if it's given from god but just i pray that this is a good perspective change and a refocus for you um because it's been a good like a perspective change on me like I, that's so cool i'm like happy i never i wasn't thinking about that today and as i was praying i was like lord what video and he's like yeah they've got tunnel vision but they don't trust me and that's why they have tunnel vision so he just wants you to trust him because you need to trust him in the days ahead i love you guys a lot to tell you that you if you have if you don't trust jesus in the days ahead oh brother oh sister let me tell you yikes like you need to have a unwavering trust in the lord and that's what he's preparing in our hearts that's what he is um teaching us in this generation no you're not self-sufficient don't buy that lie you are sufficient with jesus but you're not self-sufficient you need the lord you need to trust in him and so get into the bible really find out how trustworthy he is listen to testimonies of other people um of how god's come through like i said the george Mueller thing so encouraging i was like crying i'm like lord you're so good and it's so powerful so build be built up in the true character of who God is and that's going to inspire you with so much faith that you'll be able to take your eyes off of being consumed of, about something and really worship God and help other people and still ask for the things but be more free in your heart and in your mind and, and free from idolatry in Jesus' name because that one that one's a killer um so yeah that's all I have for you guys I pray you have a great rest of your day night evening have a good sleep have a good day wherever you're at when you watch this. Um, bless you guys in all the ways. I don't know if I said this already, but thanks for listening. And um, I'll be back when I'm back. Rue, do you want to say hi? Come on. Maybe Rue will say hi before. I Won't come here. He's literally like staring at me like, girlfriend, what are you doing? Hi, come here. Come here. Come. come. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You want to come? He's like staring at come here come come here i'll move over come come yeah come here come on he's kind of like a dog he's actually coming right now come here come on come here come on come on i know that they're gonna want to see you because you're so beautiful come yeah 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 you come here look come here yeah come here come in he's like right at the door come here he's okay you can come Come on. Come on. Look. Come here. Yeah, come on. He's like right here. Come here. Come on. Yeah, you're the baby. It's a baby. Come on. No, 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 no. He's like right at the door. Now he's just walking away. Rue, baby. Come here. I feel like I need to get you now because you're going to want to see what he looks like. One second. My ankles are cracking, things are crazy. Come here. I just hit him. I just hit him with my hair. Who is this guy? Who is this baby? You're the baby. You're the handsome baby. Thank you for joining and finishing this video. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Well, I want your face to focus, not mine. Who is this? Who is this guy? Do you see this? Who's this guy? You're handsome. Your Rue has a bit of tunnel vision. He can... Okay, thank you. He always finds himself in the mirrors and everything, so he needed this message too. Well, thanks for ending that, Rue, and that was great. You're handsome. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be back whenever I'm back. Um, yeah.